Welcome to this week's OK at Work with myself, Sarah Sawyer, my colleague, Russell Berger, both attorneys at Offit Kerman. And today we are talking about the lawyer letter, <laughs> which often means a cease and desist letter or some type of letter on lawyer letterhead telling someone to engage in something or stop engaging in something or stop their behavior. Uh, and is typically seen as a, a way of trying to get further movement on something that maybe an individual or a company hasn't been able to do so far. So kind of what, when you hear, I mean, we hear a lawyer letter all, all the time. Um, I need a lawyer letter. I need you to send them something. Like, I need to get my lawyer involved in this. What are some considerations and what are we really talking about when uh, when people people say those types of things, Russell? Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, a, a, a lawyer letter, whatever, you know, that initial letter from a lawyer that, you know, is, like you said, is really designed to compel action. I mean, that can be somewhat of a of a blunt instrument at times. Um, so what I think is really important for for business owners to keep in mind is, you know, back up a step and what's, you know, while it might be blunt and direct and forceful, you know, what's the strategy behind this? And does playing this card right now get me to where I need to go? So, you know, for me, you know, I, I think it really starts with, what do you, what's the problem? What are you trying to accomplish? And we get that out on the table and, you know, okay, well, we need to, you know, they're soliciting our customers in violation of an agreement. Okay. That's one thing, but it could be any number of things. And, and depending on the situation and depending on the party on the other side and who, and how they might respond, uh, which is also, I think, part of the calculus, you know, we make a determination about when to send a letter, whether it should come from you know the the business directly or from counsel, because um, you know that can change how it's received. The same we could ghostwrite the letter, we could say the exact same things, but who it's coming from can change how it's perceived and and can change uh, how the other side responds to it. Um, and, and so we work through those things: the tone of the letter. Um, you know, do we want this to be more of a friendly warning, or do we want this to be you know we come in guns blazing, scorched earth, and and we want to be super forceful. And there are reasons to do it differently depending on the circumstances. Yeah, and sometimes you're ask, asking for direct let, like action in the letter. Sometimes you're just putting a warning shot out there. A lot of times clients have come, you know, they come to us when they're kind of at wit's end and they are like, all right, we've tried these things. They're not paying attention. We need to up the ante a little bit. Um, but, you know, we really have to think about it strategically. Another way that you can use it as well is that sometimes if individuals are, um, like, you know, say a company is dealing with an employee and the employee is being unreasonable or in a contract dispute, the other side is being unreasonable. Occasionally, a lawyer letter can also help another lawyer get involved. And depending on who that lawyer is, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. But largely, it can be really helpful if emotions are really high for the two lawyers to be speaking to each other on the topic instead of the two individuals or the two companies or the individual and the company. So that's another way that sometimes you can say, OK, well, if we send this letter, that might compel the person or the, the entity on the other side to say, oh, crap, they've got a lawyer. I need one. I need to have someone. And again, depending on who the lawyer is. Sometimes it can be not helpful, but a lot of the times it can help uh, that they're getting that practical advice and it can help lead to a resolution. Yeah. Well, and, and to that point, I mean, like you said, it might be helpful. It might not be. We don't know. We don't know who the lawyer would even be when we send the letter. But you're making a calculated choice based on the challenges that you've had thus far or where you are in the process. Um, I do think, and sometimes you can make the the opposite choice, which is if this same letter comes from my lawyer, the other side's going to get a lawyer, and it might be harder to get this mm -hmm. resolved. I want my lawyers to write it. I want it to say exactly the right things, but I I want to send it over my signature as opposed to the lawyer's signature because that that's more likely to get me where I need to go on this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's really, like I said, I think it's a you know a case by case strategic uh, calculation as to how you want to play these things and and where all these little details can matter about the message that you're sending. Because ultimately, and this is where I'll tie it back, like you're trying to achieve a goal by doing this. This isn't just sending a letter to send a letter. If you're, you know, whatever your goal is, um, you know, should drive the strategic considerations about when to send that letter, what it should look like, um, you know, how hard to press and, and, you know, the other strategic considerations we've been talking about.
Yeah, and the ghostwriting part is an important piece as well, because even if you're not going to get the lawyer involved on in the front end yet, um, part of the strategic decision making process is also, well, how is this going to be used in the future? How do I make sure that what's included and what I'm sending is got the right tone, has, you know, that I'm not going to regret what it says, that it's thorough enough, that it doesn't waive anything, any of my rights, or it doesn't, you know, I think it says this, but it really, you know, it means something else to someone else. And, and having that extra set of eyes to really make sure that it's something that's going to be helpful long term in case you do have to take more formalized action down the road, um, depending on what the subject matter is. Well, thanks, Russell. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Sarah.